Hey guys, what's up? Amir Ryder here. This is our second episode of the Transform Life software series. And we're going live, but for anybody listening, this will also be on YouTube and all our favorite content channels. I got my good friend and advisor, Steve Schmidt. Steve was running a hyper growth sales agency called Title and then working for a company called Sellex before joining the team of Reggie.ai and focusing on the actual sales agency department where he helps sales agencies deploy campaigns faster, cheaper, and more efficiently. That's what he's going to show us. Also, fortunately enough to have Steve as an advisor on our advisory board, helping out our community. Steve, what's up, man? How are you? And what are you going to show us today? I'm just excited because I was looking at the hotels that I'm going to be staying at at the conference and click clack is the bomb. And so like, I'm, I'm straight up feeling the Colombian vibe today. And that's probably necessary because man, yes. long, cold winter. So, uh, but the winter, it's been interesting, Amir, because uh, peeling apart this onion of Reggie and really getting into it wasn't that unfamiliar for me. Um, I don't know if you know this, but at Title, we used Reggie about halfway through when we were really struggling to make content and get it out. Um, time to value is a big word that we use. Like, you know, the agency model, it kind of seemed to me, at least in the, the community that I would talk to is, you know, you sign the contract, which is the hard part. And then after that, you got to implement, which is the really hard part, because now, you're probably dealing with a client with less than desirable content, less than knowledgeable on their own pain points, problems, values. Like they probably haven't done that work, which is probably why they're talking to you. Yeah, someone wants results first. But before we get into that, you did yeah. a quick plug for our sales agency growth summit. Anybody who's a sales agency, sales trainer, sales consultant, we actually have the first ever event in Medellin, Colombia. The Click Like Hotel is awesome. If you want free tickets, go to salesagencygrowthsummit.com. Free tickets are going to be SAGS, S A G S, GIFT, Capitals. And then back to Steve, what you're saying, ironically, in our office, we actually have um, the owner of Social Bloom, Caleb Sin, who's who's when I first got exposed to Reggie uh, and how it helps people deliver results faster. But for anybody listening to our Transform Sales podcast, where we interview sales agency owners, one of the biggest mistakes that buyers often make is having unrealistic expectations with getting results fast. So it's it's Reggie actually created a tool that. I don't think I don't think the buyers deserve it transparently. I think they should be patient and they should get results the right timing. But it does actually help people deploy campaigns with speed and accuracy, which which Steve, you're going to get into now. Yeah. Um, but but it's great that seeing you move around from the industry, it's now helping agencies actually get results faster, which is the name of the game. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I wish it wasn't that way, but I guess at the same time. Um, and by design, um, typically they've come and I know your model is a little bit different, obviously, but I mean, typically we see a lot of four to six month contracts in the space, these little band-aid sprints. And of course, every agency owner goes, man, I'd rather be in a 12 month, but that we've kind of set the precedent that, you know, we got to get in quick and prove time to value. So you named it really well, which is you're going to get, you know, the time part's going to be reduced. Reggie's now working for you, but also like a big part of agencies are they're building up playbooks a lot of the time and, and top of mind right now for buyers are asking a lot of agencies, um, hey, do you guys do personalization? Because they're hearing about it. Now, that doesn't mean that they should do personalization. For, for, any, for anybody listening who's not an agency and, and might have heard the play, what, what is a playbook? Let's break down a playbook really easy for anybody who's not an agency listening. Yeah, playbook would be, this is the design of, call it your outbound motion or your go-to-market motion, but that's too complex. I mean, we're really isolating it down to what is the motion? What is the profile of the ICP? What are the plays we're running? And then it would dig apart at the personas and get into which each specific person. And so if I pulled Amir, your picture up on LinkedIn and said, this is a CEO and this is an ICP, and this is typically how we would talk to them. This is the pain that they're feeling in accordance to the solution we're providing for the problem. And this is the value that we hope they see if they want to solve the problem. And so we're really aligning that and then developing the messaging from there. Unfortunately, a lot of people develop the messaging. Right. Unfortunately, a lot of people go to market without a playbook, right? Thank Anybody you. listening to this, you know, when I asked Steve what a playbook was, we expected like a crazy definition, but really it's a playbook, right? It, it, it's what plays are you running? What results are you expecting? And a lot of people go to market without this. And then yeah. a lot of people um, pay a lot of money to get it done and don't use it. And then yeah. companies hire agencies and expect them to, to get, results and a playbook and all these things. So we're just starting to separate all these things out. Thank you for the explanation, Steve. Uh, yeah. Well, if you were Bill Belichick, you certainly wouldn't go into Sunday without a playbook, right? I mean, you're, <laughs> and it's interesting in sales because we want the results, but we don't want to do the work to get there. We kind of yeah. want, you know, minimize OPEX, get results quickly. Well, 
this this is something that I feel like a it was developed at Sapper Consulting. Now, when I say that um, Sapper was acquired, right? But they had a really good nimble email solution. They had hundreds of thousands of customers on this low tier, call it two mm -hmm. to three grand email solution, and they were really good at it because if you could get five, six, seven, eight appointments a month for you're two good. grand, like you're great. Like your cost yeah. of uh, meeting is is super low. It's within range. It's going to affect CAC and, you know, early stage companies shouldn't even be worried about CAC, but that's another episode. Mm -hmm. um, I always call it desired CAC, not act. Anybody, well, quickly, anybody who doesn't have a sales playbook, we've open sourced all our content. So just look at the comments and you'll see a link to a playbook template that you could use, reuse, redesign and, and, and get results with. Uh, keep going, Steve. Had yeah, in there. well, it's, I don't want to bore people too much with acronyms. So here, as I segue into what I'm about to show you, this will make sense. So personalization, does it work? I mean, sure, it works because it's just like better. It's it, it would be like me comparing you. Hey, Amir, you just put a fin on the back of your car. Does it go a little faster? And I'd say, yeah. How much faster? Eh, you know, it's about 18% faster. And you go, ooh, is that good? I'd be like, well, it depends. What is 18% of? Mm -hmm. Like, if you have 6,000 contacts that you're enrolling in your TAM and ICP, and now you're, you're going out an 18% response increase on what you're getting, it depends on where your baseline is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also then, in your example, you went for engagement, right? Which is something people don't talk about. They, they always go for the meeting. You went for engagement, an answer to a question, which leaves the conversation, which is a whole nother podcast that we're not going to get into, but I noticed yeah. you did. I noticed you did that. You saw what I did there. So let's, yeah. let's do this. I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of this real quick. I've got messenger up because we're working hard. So I'm going to pull Reggie up on you. So if I'm a rep and you know, let's advance out of this and say like, this is kind of what we're looking at your playbook. So if I was looking at a mirror, I have do's and don'ts right here. And if I'm a rep, this is really good for cold calling because Amir answers. I don't want to say the same thing every time because your personality AI allows your brain to receive information a certain way. And I know you well enough, Amir, I, I know how to speak to you for the most part. But if I'm coming in cold, I would have no idea. You're not Steve Schmidt. You're not going down the list. You have a very unique personality and you don't process information like me. So now I have to tailor my pitch to you, if you will. So how do I do that real quickly? I can just create that message and say, okay, you're a CEO at CloudTask. What else do I want to look at? I could go to your personal Twitter and see if anything's updated. Usually that's a 50-50 field for me. It kind of seems very, you know, bullet pointed, but let's just go ahead and not use that. And I could use, you know, I'm going to pick cloud task and let's coming up with a custom field here. I would say running a sales agency is difficult to scale. I'm just coming up with this. Uh, Why am I surprised you didn't say easy? Um, well, it is difficult. We all know that. I know. So I'm just joking. I can go here and then say the value I would provide if I'm the rep is, you know, let's just keep it simple, right? Better sales emails. That's not what we would say uh, fully, but that would be for the sake of today. I can now generate three personalized messages to you very quickly. Now, is it the perfect format? Is it formatted, um, you know, to be delivered? What we've done is this, is I could copy and paste this. So now if I just go over to like a simple Gmail and I know that you're not, I'm going to share this tab out. I know that a lot of people are working out of the sales engagement platform. So I'll show you that in a second, but now I can very easily go here and then copy and paste that email in. I can go ahead and pull Reggie's six Chrome panel extension up. Um, I could then put your a writer, right? A writer mm -hmm. at cloud task. Spelt it wrong. I think. Oh, I did. Thank you. There you are. Okay, so now your email verified. So I want to stop here and say, like, I just typed your email. A lot of us are using Neverbounce and whatever. Um, this is the, the point where an agency should know. We are validating the email address is alive and accurate using Neverbounce and a free integration here. We also allow bulk uploads of Neverbounce. We also partner with Apollo, and I'll show you that where we... So, so, so let's pause here, right? For anybody listening who's an agency owner, obviously, we can move a little quicker because you know the, the, the terminology, but I'll go slow for any kind of listener. What, what we just did with Reggie was we were able to personalize a message based on someone's personality and validate a actual email that was correct all within probably 15 seconds. Yep. And now I'm going to do a third thing that'll blow your mind. So Reggie wrote a pretty good email here. We believe that subject line personalization um, substantially increases deliverability because you don't have a thumbprint on it where everything looks the same. So you can see here, if I don't like this subject line, I can now scale through them and it's contextual to what's in the email. This isn't just pulling it out of nowhere. It is saying very much like this is the best possible chance you have to open by using this verbiage to this mm -hmm. persona. 
Yeah. And anyone who's an SDR looking at this too, right? This is not designed to replace you with automation. This is to make you, your job better and more efficient, right? You, you can now get 50 personalized emails out per day that are validated versus writing four. So it's making, it's taking the best part of your work, the most efficient part of your work and, and making it faster, cheaper, more efficient, which we love. We love. And then you're going to get a mobile preview, right? So simply put like 62% of people open on email. So you're always going to want to look at that too much on one screen. Guess what? I'd go, gosh, man, I wrote a really long email to Amir. There's no way he's going to read that. I can just quickly highlight it and then shorten it. Now it's going to take out all the filler words, which reps are, you know, we all do that. And now I could have a very tight email where, you know, I got to format it, but now I can go back and say, does this fit on one screen? It still doesn't. I need to further shorten it. We always give you too much because we want you to be able to trim down versus scale up. Uh, makes it very easy for idea. I mean, the hardest part of me, if you think about it with content is usually where do you start? Mm -hmm. What's the framework? So I just said, okay, let's just condense this down to call it 80 words or less if you believe in that theory. Well, I like I like how you pulled up how it looks on the phone. Very few people did that. But now, now anybody who's an SDR is spending less time verifying an email, finding things, researching somebody, the email's out faster. They could get more time actually putting themselves in the receiver's shoes, right? Yeah. We very well often have a little time to be like, well, if I received this email, would I respond back to it, right? It's this first person yep. um, thinking that that people are, you know, not focusing on as much as they should. This allows an SDR to, to, to cause I would not, I could have sent that email, mm -hmm. but you're right. They come to phones. It looked too long. And now you had a chance to kind of, you know, put yourself in the person, the receiver and spend more time there than you did sending. Yeah. And within your playbook, Amir, um, going back to that, you can now show them that you're paying attention to that and that you're showing them the actual format as well as I'll show you soon that you can see what it looks like in their inbox on their, their desktop on Gmail or Outlook, which, Gmail shows more words in Outlook because the subject line goes on top, not to the left. So I'll show you that. But it's usually those little things that can make a big difference. And I want to show you another little thing because, I mean, we all know that there's a lot of vaporware out there right now that doesn't get usage or adoption. So we created a dashboard last week in about two days because we had to ask so much um, where we can look at who's using what feature. Um, right now, I'm drilled down on a rep so I can go whole out to the team and say, let's look at feature usage across the team. Let's see, where are our areas of, de of deficiency, high level? And then I can go down and drill down. So if I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one with a rep and I'm pulling up Elliot, I can now go to Elliot's particular stats. He's verifying emails. We love that. Content library, he's pulling out of that. He's looking up the prospect, like I showed you your personality profile. And he's personalizing, not everyone, because not every email needs to be personalized, especially with volume. Elliot's doing great. He's above average. 79 is average. He's 85. He's an SDR, right? And here, I can then pull up the email and then say, okay, Elliot, like this is an email we need to go in and coach. And we could do a side by side where I say, it's really simple. You're just not doing this. And if you just do it once, you'll probably get it right every time. And so I could go pull up that email. I can't see it because I don't have, you know. A, a Steve, quick question. If anybody listening, watching, for what are you showing us now? This is almost in a way also a Q&A or coaching tool to actually help moderate because sales is moving so fast, right? Where, where yeah. it's moving so quickly. But now you're giving people a quick window on coaching these like personalization, the, the things that actually get results, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's while, while everybody on LinkedIn's talking about personalization, you guys are actually doing it and then giving leaders a portal to coach it in real time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because you need that ability to coach. And we all know, like Gong, amazing company, right? Installed it, amazing interface. I didn't know that I would essentially need a full time employee just to go in there and manage it. And I know gongs evolved a lot, but like these big, awesome softwares, like they're, they're not as nimble as we'd like them to be. And we just feel that that's super necessary because as you'll see, like what I'm going to do right now when I share out this new tab is we came into Chrome, but really agencies have the core problem of we got to create sequences. We have to rewrite. We got to do edits. We have to create lots of personas. Whatever that is, is Reggie now, this is our, our home center here. And you can see everything we do from blog posts to social posts to inbound, to outbound, to LinkedIn, personalized email, obviously, but let's just create a cloud task outbound sequence here. And I'll show you how to do it in under two or three minutes mm -hmm. instead of two or three hours. And sometimes, you know, it's two or three weeks. So in a way, Reggie is like building a, a go-to-market plan, right? Like not, maybe not the actual financial model of it, but the actual strategy. Yeah. Of the messaging. Yeah. It, we, we, if you think about Reggie, it's, it's everything you do with messaging and content for all of your company's ICP should reside in Reggie or somewhere like Reggie. Oftentimes it's in Google Drive and it's, you know, one person knows where it is and nobody else knows and good luck, um, especially when you have 50, 60 clients at the same time. And so as I go into this, there's one thing I want to show you. So if I back up here, um, like one of the best things I could show you is that Reggie actually has workspaces. So right here, 
if you're in, uh, if you're an agency client, number one, we give you unlimited. So everybody else is capped at 2000 credits, which equals about 20,000 words total a month. Hmm. Agencies have unlimited. So client one, client two, client three, client four, they're all separate workspaces. Our larger agencies have the opportunity to white label this and put their colors and logo on it because you can invite your clients in to view the content to help edit it with you, to make it more of a collaborative process early on, get their skin. To get results it. faster, cheaper right. and more efficient. I want to say it over and over again. So, so you've, what we're demoing right now, for anybody listening, it, it, both buyers are, are agencies and end users, but specifically why Reggie's part of our community and, and, and uh, one of the companies speaking at our sales agency growth summit is because they've literally developed the GTM uh, uh, tool for sales agencies to do all these things faster, even getting feedback from buyers, um, sometimes a buyer giving a feedback on, a, you know, they want approval on sequences. It, they wait a week. They don't get results right away. They want to fire you right now. This is li literally yeah. holding everybody accountable in one space, which is awesome. Yeah. I've been, I've been in the business long enough to know that this tool is great. Like I've, you know, I've, we've, we've, yeah. we've spent the money making the playbooks, the sales, and, and it's, it's been all over the place. It's in Google drive. It's discombobulated here. Here you're actually executing as an agency. You can white label it, as you said, and you're getting data that helps you even do it faster. It's learning. Right. Yeah. And the stacking effect. I mean, why do we have these sequences here? Because these are the best performing. Right. These are we we did death to templates, Amir, about 10 months ago. So every email that's generated here is not going to be a template. It will not be like anything else. It's going to be specific to the way you want to build it. And so we use that stacking effect. Obviously, some people aren't doing calls. So you take those steps out. Some people don't do LinkedIn. They take those steps out. So now that stacking effect is really like personalization, if you think about it, is good for emails, but it, it, the stacking effect of getting them to want to engage with you on other channels is immense. So we're going to build this sequence now. So if this is a cooking show, like I'm, I'm going to be, you know, whatever her name is, um, whipping up, you know, buttermilk biscuits in the South. And we're going to show you here that we understand cloud tasks because we just went to your website and AI pulled all your language in. Here's the keywords that you would use. So let's get rid of customer success and put another word in there. So Amir, if you were using SEO and paying for it. B2B lead gen. There we go. B2B lead gen. Give me two more words. Sales freelancers. Okay. One more. Sales software. Okay. Here we go. It's not the That's best word. Right there, I like it. Now you want a call script, I'm assuming. So we'll go ahead and use our Josh Braun five lane call script um, here. Anybody just listening, Josh Braun's a well-known trainer in the industry who was well-respected. He threw that in there super fast. So the frameworks yeah. are built off. People have been there, done that before and have proven. That's right. Yeah. Josh has been very close in the early stage process at Reggie. And so we trust that. The personas. Now, this is where I want to kind of pause and go, okay, most people have three, four personas that they're working on and you're creating the persona specifically for that client right here. So if Amir, if you were going out to build a persona for what you're selling, what would that title be? And what would the persona name be? VP of sales. VP of sales. Okay. So that's easy. Sales now, leader. Persona now we're going to go, uh, let's go vice president of sales and just give it a different name. So we get both here. So management level VP now ready saying, okay, let's go pull from everything here. That works very well. And so we're going to say VP of sales are obviously in sales. So now we know this is a sales email. They act very differently than other personas. If those were your other personas, you would build those all on. Now, every persona is going to get its own distinct sequence. Super important because we tend to send the same thing out to everybody, assuming that it will work. And we all know that that's a volume game here. Volume can be at play, but we're going to be still talking to them about the problem, pain, whatever it is that that they would their point of view would be their view on that specific problem. And then Reggie's so good at getting this. We're just going to hit generate pain point. We're going to generate a pain point right from what we have. So like, for example, that's what Reggie thinks one of your pain points should be. Would you agree or disagree, Amir? It's, it's definitely a pain point. Yeah. Okay, let's find a different one and see if we can get a better one. Yeah. Is this relevant to like pain point of buyers that come through our marketplace or us ourselves? Uh, buyers that come to your marketplace. Great. Yeah. Then, that, then, then yes. Okay. Let's, and then if you were like, Hey, I really like that. I'm going to save that to my pain point library because I, I don't want to lose that. Reggie just gave it to me. No problem. You just go pain point one, select client, persona, VP of sales. Now it's saved into your team files. It's accessible forever. So now and, and, if we're, and if we're an agency using the product, are you are you allowed to, to, to separate multiple? Yep. It's, well, so, so basically like you can basically build the personas and the pain points, the content based on that client, your ICP, which works well with us because as a marketplace, we're asking people's case studies and we're matching buyers with companies that have executed similar campaigns, which means that right. they did that and used Reggie, they can also deploy 
the writing faster. Yep. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And this is going to, I mean, this will perform well in the marketplace because there's, I mean, we're, we're taking anywhere from 15 to 25 inbounds a day right now. So there's a lot of buzz. It's the conversion of buzz to, you know, value. And speaking of value, let's just go create that value prop right here again. Um, I would say that's pretty good for the sake of today. Let's just say Reggie will use it. Proof point is that quick story. You know, hey, I know Steve Schmidt. You know, he was a guy, da, da, da. This is what it was like. This is what happened. This is what it's like now. So in just three minutes, we developed your whole sequence. We can go out in 27 different languages. I just developed one for a gentleman who owns a large agency overseas in French. Uh, and his mind was kind of blown. And so obviously, if you're multinational, Amir, that would matter significantly because now you can take those clients on and convert for them. Yeah. Um, we're going to generate the campaign. So a little magic button. Hey, for any sales industry listening to this too, it's, it's also it's also basically a marketing of sales tool, right? Because I think you can just demonstrate confidence with buyers by showing them that you have actually sold to HR leaders in the United States, $20,000 ACV. You're almost able to establish more credibility than most of these companies that hire outsourced sales vendors do because a lot of times they hire them in the market validation stage, right? So it's like, Yep. Now you're also giving sales agencies the ability to kind of specialize and highlight what a market validation is, which is usually the Achilles heel of most campaigns where buyers come in, they need market validation, they want an ROI, problems happen, you get fired. This is also another way of preparing a buyer to be a better buyer, yep. establishing credibility, and also kind of like, you know, it, it's it, it's opening up your book. It's like going to a doctor and being like, let me see, let me see the last 20 patients you had, right? Yeah. Well, and we just developed all of this. I mean, how long would this have taken your team, Amir, if you said, hey, I need you to write a sequence. Can you get it done today? Yeah. So we just did that in two minutes. This is the first email. There's our Josh Braun call script, five lanes from opener to close. Obviously, there's editing in here, so you could edit this. So we make that call script. Um, for those people who uh, want to move steps around and can't do it in their SEP, it's very easy to do it. Now, keep these in mind. We have these ordered a specific way. For a reason. Now, if I went over to this email and I said, gosh, I really like this. The analyzer likes it. It's 89%. Um, I want a new subject line, but I also want to add an A-B test. I would just duplicate that, Amir. I would then use my B. I just rephrase the text because it's going to think for me. And then I rephrase the subject line and now I've got a B test. Or I can rephrase that and do whatever I want with it. But now those two emails are significantly different. Yeah. Anybody listening who's, who's a sales agency, they're going to get what an A-B testing is. But just to repeat it, if people here are uh, new time buyers, sales field, anybody who's not a sales agency, A-B testers refers to testing two variables, right? So you send 100 emails to the same persona with one message, 100 to the same persona with another message, and kind of make adjustments based on its experiments, right? That's, that's yeah. really what it is. It's, a, it's an experiment in real time. Yep. And what I just did there is it only detected one wrong word and that was with masculinity. So for inclusion on gender bias, it said, hey, this is a masculine word. You want to balance it out. We did. So we have inclusion, gender bias, spam words. Keep in mind, if it is there, it will tell you what to remove. IDU ratio, super important that you're talking about them, not you. How many questions are you answering them? Readability, reading time, message link, subject link. Though we score all of them, you can now get that same first line view I talked about. So what is this looking like in Outlook? What does this look like in Gmail? Obviously, subject line to the left, less words. Why does that matter? Because when you're on mobile and you're in first line view, you want to make sure that first line is captivating and now you're fitting everything on one screen. It's not quite there. Super important. Again, 62% of people read emails on mobile. I would just then go shorten this up. And then I'd say, I bet you this is going to give me exactly what I need. We're on to the second step. We now have step one done. I'll be done in about 10 minutes. I can then take that, kick it over to the client and say, hey, client, I'm going to go ahead and share this out with you. Put Amir's email address in here so I can go a writer at cloudcast.com. I'm going to share that out with you. You're now going to get a copy of that. When you click into that, you're going to see exactly what I see. And you could go 1A and you could say, Steve, too long. And just like Google Sheets, it's now going to timestamp that Amir here. I could go in and resolve it and say, got it. Thanks for the feedback. All timestamped, all historical. Now you have that ability to go there. This is a big one too. So if you wanted to create that playbook, I would just say, okay, create a pain point library. So again, I'm going to go ahead and just put cloud task here because this isn't, uh, it didn't pull it over. And let's just say that cloud task description was there, right? I would generate that content. And so just for brevity is a sales agency that offers, I'm just going to use generic terms here and software services, just to see what it pumps out here. I could say, I want that to be witty. And then I want to do ink language. Now it's going to generate all the pain points for me that I would want. And I can keep generating those. 
Um, so I could say like here, great. It's still using hospitals from the previous client that is just carrying through for the demo. And I could generate a whole pain point library and just save this one, save this one, save this one. And it all goes into my folgering system under pain points. And now those pain points are available. I can even take a link. I can name it what I want. I could allow downloads gate content. And then I have a piece of content that's gateable so the client can see exactly how it's performing. It's amazing. And it also seems to me like it's a training tool in a way because you can start training SDRs on the actual Im impactful language, right? Yeah. It's getting right into like who you are, who they are. And, and it's, it's by reading it, at least I learned that way. Not everybody does. I'm weird, but that's, I'm seeing, I'm seeing like a GDM plan, a, a, an onboarding technology yeah. and a training in one for what matters the most, which is, I'm like, it's the nut and bolts of, uh, of uh, yeah, you know, everyone's rushes to get a campaign, but like mm -hmm. the words and the personas, like this is the difference between success and not, right? Like if you have a $50,000 average contract value, it's almost one customer makes the difference between a happy customer. If you're a sales agency servicing a buyer versus a non happy customer. So, so any sales agencies that are watching this, um, I'm sure, I'm sure you, you, you probably can see how this can help you guys do faster, cheaper, more efficient, but also, all that content that's living in your Google Drive that could take months to look through to find out, you know, you did work for this customer in the past, the same, a similar persona. Now you're researching what you did and the data, even that, you know, even researching and pulling it out of Google Drive, you're still mm -hmm. going to be ahead of the game. But yep. if it's all in one technology platform, that's how you scale, right? Yeah. That's where you don't break. So I can then send it to Front Spin, Outreach, HubSpot, Outplay, Sales Loft. Salesforce, I can now hit this and it will then bring that and carry that sequence into what the HubSpot. Did you say HubSpot? Did you say yeah, Apollo? HubSpot. Sorry, yeah, we have HubSpot and we have Apollo. Yeah, we have pretty much everybody who's big now. We have built-in integrations. And so you can then send this to there and guess what? Your reps, when they're in their task flow, the Reggie Chrome extensions will be right there. So if you just want to personalize first line and crank out 80 emails, that'll take about two hours and that'll be done right in the sales engagement platform. So we're not asking you to live in Reggie or Gmail. This is just the backend engine. Once I'm off and running and I go into outreach, for example, I'll share this tab out here just to show you for illustration purposes. I can then develop an email to this gentleman. I'm going to be able to use that same extension that I was using everywhere else. You can see Reggie's going to pop up here. And so now I can use Reggie right within outreach. And so if I'm doing a one-off email, right, I'm going to be able to, to have that extension live right here. And I can use all of that in my task flow um, and so that's super important because we're not asking people to get out of their SEP. We're asking them to do what they've done today. Just do it, like you said, more efficiently, more focused. Yeah. That's it, man. That's that's the demo. That's Reggie. So 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 this guy's anybody listening? You know, Reggie's good for for buyers that are not sales agencies, but this specific event, this specific demo was designed for sales agencies that are looking to help um, grow their customers faster, cheaper, more efficiently. This has been awesome. This is our second software seller review and we did it live. Steve, you're the man. Um, if anybody wants to find out more about Reggie, there's gonna be links to all the software platforms and the templates that we mentioned in the comments when we publish the, the, uh, this, this webinar live. Steve, where can everybody find you if they wanna reach out to you now and they wanna help their their, their customers or sales agency that want to help their customers onboard faster. Where's the best place for them to, to find you? Two places, um, LinkedIn, Steve Schmidt. Um, if you just put that in, you'll be able to find me. Um, within that, I have some great content in my little about us section where you can preview Reggie. I'll throw this link in there too, Amir, so people can access that. Um, and then of course, Reggie.ai um, and just tell them Steve sent you or tell them more importantly, Amir sent you. Uh, because you're Steve. Out. Yeah, me or Steve. There you go. So yeah, it's that simple and we'd love to chat with you. Yeah, and everybody check this out. If you're a sales agency, sales consultant, sales trainer, we'd love to have you at our event May 12th in Medellin, Colombia. Um, Reggie's going to be there showing people their, their tips and tricks. And uh, we got free tickets with the code SAGS GIFT. It's S-A-G-S-G-I-F-T capital. Everybody, thank you for uh, tuning in on this live. Or, and if you're watching it, not live, pre-recorded on uh, YouTube. Appreciate you guys checking in. Steve. I will let you go help more sales agencies crush their goals. Thank yeah. you and goodbye, buddy. Amir, take care, brother.